we have here is the Amiga Workbench 4.1 um, desktop. I've got it running in uh, 1680 by 1050 on a 24 inch display. I've actually customized it as well, put my own backdrop on there, um, but I'll show you quickly around. Some things have been adopted by other operating systems. You may notice that it's quite similar to a Mac insofar that it has the uh, Windows um, the menus rather at the top of the screen and they are accessed by holding down the, uh, the right button and they are there when you need them and when you don't you let go you can also open it anywhere on the screen as well if you want to um, but you know they can be at the top there and they don't actually appear until you click the button now uh, it also is a very very responsive OS as well it's got a, uh, a preemptive multitasking scheduler that will ensure that important tasks do get the, their fair share of processing time and it's really fast as well to respond to user clicks, you know, opening directories and stuff like that, a lot quicker than my Windows machine which is much more powerful. And uh, looking around the windows as well, um, we have we have a few volumes on the side here, we've got the uh, the system hard disk, the work one which is, you know, my applications one, you can do as many hard disk partitions as you, as you please on here really. We also have a RAM disk as well that I do find really handy. Every time you launch um, the operating system it opens a RAM disk by default and it's, um, it grows depending on how, how big you make it, uh, how much you put in there rather. Which I find really useful if you're downloading off the internet or you may be installing a program and you want to try it out without having a copy, you know, messing up your hard disk and leaving trails all over the place. You can download your download files to the RAM disk, install them onto your OS and then when the computer is turned off and on everything in the RAM will get deleted. So I find it really handy for that as well. Um, we've also got a screen system that the Amiga's had, you know, pr pretty much since inception really, since it was designed back in the, uh, the mid-80s. So basically a, a, an application can open on its own public screen entirely. Um, you can look between them, see. I've got a word processor open there and the little depth gadget in the top right corner there will cycle you between the screens. Or you can even have you know multiple screens at different screen resolutions actually running all at the same time and just kind of fan them down. You can even drag and drop things between screens. You know, if I had a document there, I could drag and drop it into here. It's a really handy feature actually. Um, also, the OS has a system called Data Types as well. They're kind of like codecs really. Um, they're stored in here. And what it means is anything you've got a, uh, a data type for, it's actually a file type handler. So uh, you can use them for picture displaying, playing music, decoding video files, rendering websites or anything like that. Any application system-wide can access the data types, which means that you, know, you can basically open any file in any application that will support it, providing you've got a data type for it, which is uh, very good. It also includes a scripting language as well, uh, too now in fact, AREX, which is an Amiga implementation of the uh, the Rex language, um, and also Python now as well, which means it's uh, possible to automate, integrate, and uh, remote control pretty much any application um, system-wide. It's really handy. You know, all Amiga applications have an AREX port, pretty much. Uh, icon handling as well is really good on the uh, the OS. You can actually have different types of icon. Um, for example, in here, uh, the the directory icons they're called uh, they're called drawers in here. It's a drawer icon, and you can kind of uh, set what kind, what kind of icon type it is. So, uh, say for example, I've got a uh, a document file. I'll go into uh, my USB stick here, an MP3 there. I can go into information uh, icon, and the default tool is what it will play in, and you can change that to anything. You can have it system wide, or maybe just you know specifically for that one file. And you can tell it where to begin from the shell and AREX port or the workbench. Um, it in co comes included with a, a few media players. We've actually got a port of um, Winamp called Amiga Amp. Pretty nice, you know. It um, accepts all of the, uh, the Winamp skins as well, so it's uh, really useful for using that. You can uh, assign devices too that I find quite handy. The, uh, the Amiga shell, the command line, is very powerful. And rather than having physical drive letters and numbers, you can assign uh, a label to any device that you want using the assign command. So I could call my system disk, you know, um, dog if I wanted to. Assign dog to uh, the system. Now if I uh, CD into dog, there it's now my system disk. And also a nice little feature as well if you're uh, 
if you want to open a file, you could, um, for example, if I, uh, if I uh, say an archive file, I've got drag and drop support in here too, and autocomplete, you could type, you know, LHA extract and drag one of those into there, and that put the full path in there for you. Extract a file to the RAM disk, and there you go. There's an archive in that to there now. Into there. So, uh, you know, it's really handy to have these shortcuts in the OS as well, actually. Um, it comes included with full PDF support as well. Um, so, for example, I opened a, uh, a PDF file here. I've got an advert PDF. There you go. Really quick and responsive, too. That's part of the operating system now. Um, we have a, a web browser called OWB, which is actually a WebKit browser. And uh, quite, quite a decent one as well, actually. It will display, you know, Apple's website, for example, you could go on to. There you go. Really quick and well, quite responsive tab support in there as well. You can open new tabs and go between them. I find, you know, a really good feature. Also got a, uh, a DVD player on here too. If you'll allow me a moment to fetch one. I can pop a DVD into the, uh, into the drive and give it a moment to uh, load up. There we go, I thought I'd demo with uh, an old favourite. The police squad. So really with it you can kind of do anything that you'd uh, expect to do with a, a modern OS really. I've got um, an IRC client in here called uh, Wookie Chat that you know is really powerful. Um, support for multiple servers to uh, FTP client on there as well and down the side of it here it's actually called AmiDoc the uh, the doc system um, I've got an MSN client in there you know but you, you can basically have as many docs as you want you could have I've got two here one down there one down there you could have several around the screen comes with Ami update as well which is um, an updating engine scan for new versions of uh, everything on the uh, on the OS. It will search for new uh, custom classes, new drivers, new libraries, new data types, updates to your applications as well. Kind of like a repository really, so it's uh, really good for that and it's literally, you know, click to install kind of thing. Um, you know, I find that really handy. One thing I love about the Amiga OS as well is um, a really a really logical layout to everything as well. In Windows and uh, Mac, for example, I know Mac you've got the, uh, the libraries folder in there, but with the Amiga, everything is basically in a few different folders. You can go to uh, the menu there and show all the hidden folders. All of the libraries are stored in libs. C is for uh, commands. S is for scripts, including the, uh, the startup ones and anything that, you know, a program might want to use. But basically that the entire system will be stored in these. So if you find that you're missing a library, it'll be a simple, you know, drag and drag and drop into the libs folder. Uh, the devices in here, if you want to install a new uh, a new monitor resolution for example, they're all stored in little files here. Drag and drop into it, it will uh, load them up. Keyboards, printers the same, it's drag and drop one file. And uh, same with applications, it's very similar to OS 10 in the way that um, it will literally be, if you want to delete that, right click, delete the file delete that one file and the entire application is zapped really. So um, as a quick tour around uh, Amiga OS 4.1 and hopefully you'll be <laughs> a little bit more wise as to why you know maybe some people stick with it. I find it a really responsive operating system and out of everything that I've got you know it's, it's one that I enjoy using the most really. Uh, one thing I did actually forget to show you is um, the reboot time which is a bit of a feature. If we hold down control and the two Amiga keys, what they'd be on the keyboard. You can see the reboot time here. And there we go to uh, a fully usable desktop there. And when you've had enough, no closing down or anything, literally go down here, turn the power off. And that is it.